What is up guys? Zach in here and in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to find the hottest virtual wholesaling markets in the United States of America. And most importantly, I'm going to show you exactly how to find the best zip codes and areas in those markets so you can actually have the best success. So you can be pinpointed for the right wholesaling real estate markets so you know exactly where to go after. I think a lot of people out here, you know, they do the best marketing out here, right? They do the best tactics to try to find a really good wholesaling real estate deal, but they ultimately come short because they're in the wrong market. Or the worst case scenario, the, honestly, the worst thing I've seen is they are in the perfect market, but they're not doing as well as they should. Maybe they're getting one deal a month, but they could be getting three deals a month. Not if it's not because they need to work harder. But they just need to change where they're marketing. Not even the script, it's just where they're going. And that can actually triple their results, guys. The reason I'm making this video is because when I started on wholesaling real estate, I started scaling up my wholesaling real estate operations. I figured out pretty quick when I looked at my first 50 deals that I would probably would say 80%. So this is called the 80-20 rule. I want you guys to know this. 80% of all my wholesaling deals were only in 20% of the zip codes in my city. In Port St. Lucie, I think there's 13, 14 zip codes, about three or four zip codes. That's where 80% of my deals were. That being said, and after doing virtual wholesaling and studying everyone, doing a lot of great wholesaling markets, I figured out very quick, very fast, that most wholesaling deals are only going to be done in 20% of zip codes in every single city. Uh, that's good for wholesaling real estate. So the question is, I mean, two main questions we're going to answer today is, how do I find the top cities, counties, city zips? And most importantly, how do I find the best areas in those cities? So I'm excited for this one. I know I'm going to help a lot of people out. I know a lot of people had questions about this today. Uh, they want me to share it today, so I'm excited. So before I get into it, do me a big favor. Make sure you guys hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and always Comment below your questions, and I'm here to help you become the best wholesaler possible. I'm excited. You can get into wholesaling real estate with no money. This is the reason why I'm giving everything to you for no money because you can start with no money. I'm going to give it for no money so you have all the tools to rise yourself up and become the best entrepreneur wholesaler possible. So let's get into it. Let's cut the fluff today, and let's get into exactly how to find the best markets for wholesaling real estate so you can have the best success possible. But let's get into it and let's really share everything. So we're going to share today exactly how to find the hottest virtual markets and the hottest zip codes for wholesaling real estate. Now, before we break down the top zips, the top everything, if we're looking into virtual wholesaling or in just regular, like if you're just doing in your own market, this isn't going to be a bad video, honestly. But like we're going to share, first of all, the two key factors that make a quote unquote hot, hot market, right? Everyone says, oh, that's a hot market. Oh, that's a terrible market. That's a cold market. You know, my grandma said this one. My guru said this is a good market. I, guys, I, I'm going to cut the fluff. I'm going to tell you actually what's real in wholesaling real estate so we can actually know what's legit and what's not legit, okay? So there are two key factors when it comes to figure out if you're in a good wholesaling market or not. There's just two simple, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, simple key factors to, simple out to make sure if you are in a really good wholesaling real estate market. So before I get into it, let's break this all down. And I want everybody to think, are you in a good market or not? Maybe the way you're thinking if you're in a good market or not, it might be a little skewed. It might be a little off right now if exactly you are in the right market or not. A lot of people, they want to complicate it. You know, I looked at the ratio of, of the rents and, and, and the, the, the for, forensic analysis of this. And the honest truth is, if you look at two or three really key factors, it's going to tell you straight up what you should be doing. So Let's break down exactly what they are. So the two key factors, and I want everybody to understand this, all right? Number one is going to be population, all right? If your population in your city, county, so let's use county for example here, okay? If your population for your county is over 50,000, it's, it's decent enough. There, there's enough cash buyers in there that we could probably do it, right? So I'd rather it be a city population over 50,000. I prefer a county population over 100,000. City, 50,000, okay? The reasoning behind this and why that would make it a hot market is because we need some population in there, okay? Now, I do a lot of people send me JV deals and I look at all these stinking JV deals. And some people get really, I'm just going to say this nicely, butthurt that I don't JV their 
amazing deal. And one guy came on the live a little upset, not, not making fun of them or anything, but like, he's like, why, why are you JVing my deal? I, I need to send it to you. You need to do this. And I'm like, it's a deal of a lifetime, right? The guy had a deal and it was not the best discount, but like it was in a population of literally 2000, like legitimately in the county, the entire, like county to county is like a 30 minute drive. The entire 30 mile radius, there's 2000 people living in that, in the place. And like, I think 500 people in the city. If I look at 500 people, how many cash buyers are going to be in that city? Not a lot. Okay. And so we have to understand if we want a lot of cash buyers and what makes a lot of cash buyers, there has to be commerce. There, there has to be people looking to flip properties. If I'm going to buy a property and flip it, there should be a family that's going to have jobs in that economy. Like uh, economies are kind of all over the place in the United States, but we need to have a population. That means a decent amount of people have decided, hey, we want to live here for a certain reason. Why are there more people living in Chicago than living in Portland, Oregon? Because Chicago's got a lot bigger economy going on, okay? And I want you guys to understand, this doesn't make one city better than the other, but if you have not a lot of people living in the city, no one's going to buy that property because they can't rent it out as well. Why well, just go to Cheyenne, Wyoming if I'm going to do it versus if I'm going to go to like, I don't know, Pocahanna, uh, Indiana, right? So guys, I want you to understand that the population needs to be over 50,000. And there, when I say that, I want you to understand this. A lot of people are like, oh, he means I need to be in Chicago, New York, or LA, and that's the only place I should go. You know, I should go to a place that has 10 million people living in it, right? It's going to be a lot of buyers there. I'll tell you that. But let me give you a quick, really big secret. In the United States, according to the Census Bureau, uh, about three-ish years ago, they did a full census, two and a half, two. But they have found, and this population is only rising, but they have found over 300 urban areas with a U.S. in the U.S. that, ha oh, that have over a, po a population of 100,000. That means there are 300, okay? So if there are 300 people watching this live stream right now, that's one area for one person watching the live stream, right? That's a lot. And I guarantee you probably can't name all 300. I probably can't. If you force me to, I probably could because I have an identic memory and I like geography, but it'd be very hard for me to do. And for most people, it'd be very, very difficult, right? And so you're gonna have to look these things up and we're gonna show you the statistics, the data, all these things. But like, I want you guys to understand that you need some population. You're not gonna have a hot wholesaling market in a population of 500 people. It just ain't gonna work. It's like trying to make a million dollars at a grocery store and there's only a thousand people living in there. All right. Now I've, I got to do it with the grocery. There's going to be people wanting to buy things. There's got to be people living there. Okay. It's going to be very difficult to do. So it's just understand that we are selling deals to cash buyers and you need a lot of title companies. And out of all the title companies, some are going to have to go out here and accept wholesaling because not every title company is going to be okay with that. We need to go through like 50 title companies and find the ones that are good for wholesaling. All right. This is very important, guys. So why can't I just go after the biggest population centers and be like, hey, that's it? Very distinct reason. There is another thing, okay? We have to have at least an average ARV below $450,000. Now, this is what we call basically a Venn, a Venn diagram, okay? There's a circle here, okay? Now, there are population centers that are over 100,000. And there are pieces of real estate priced under 450000 We have to get the ones that intersect in between. And so this is interesting, right? So we want our average ARV, our average median home price for the county, preferably the city, but let's say the county, be under 450000 The reasoning behind this is statistically with human beings, sales, and anything in general. This is a law for human beings. We're not even talking about real estate. But this is just for business in general. Let's give a, just a straight up business lesson for everybody watching this. The higher the price of something, the less willing the seller is to take a big discount on it. So let's use an example. If I'm going to sell you shoes, okay, for 50 bucks and you ask for a, let's say a 20% discount, that's 10 bucks off my $50 shoe, you wanna buy it for 40. Am I gonna really get offended by you doing that? 
not really. And I might even take that deal. It's 10% off. Okay, no big deal. Now, if I have a $10 million yacht or whatever fancy guru thing they try to do, let's call it a, I'm feeling guru-y today, okay? Let's call it a jet. I have a $10 million jet and you call me and offer to buy it for $9 million. Uh, what? Why would I give a million dollars off of that? You've never earned anything over your life, buddy. Rah, 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 rah. Of course I would not take a million dollars off of my jet. Why is that? Because human beings never focus off the percentage off the value that you break it down by. They only focus on the amount the price goes down. 10 bucks, not a big deal. A million dollars, too much. Even when you are a multimillionaire, it, it, it's too much, okay? This is why, this is why CNBC, the news media is so good on this. If the stock market goes down 1%, let's say that, uh, let, let's do this for example, okay? Let, let's do some, let's do some stats, okay? Let's look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, all right? So let's look at what happened uh, last week, okay? The Dow Jones Industrial Average is currently at 33,630, okay? And it's been pretty much up since forever, okay? Like even from 1983, right? So like it's just going up, okay? Now, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, all right? We're looking at this right here. All right, okay. So the Dow Jones Industrial Average, it was up day over day, 2.13%. Oh my gosh. What would get bigger headlines? What would freak people out more? The Dow Jones is up 2.13% today. Whoa. That doesn't, that, that doesn't excite human beings. Your brain doesn't get jacked up for that, right? But if I told you the Dow Jones is up 700 points today, People get ex so excited. It's like, why is that so exciting? That's 2.13%. No, but it's up 700 points. Same thing if it goes down 2%, which 2% is like, like nothing. It's down 700 points. Oh my gosh. Versus if I told you it's down 2% 2, 2 today. Oh, oh, just 2%. Uh, that, that's fine, right? Do you see the crazy like stress that does? Because human beings only care about the number it goes down, not the percentage. And because we think very emotionally sometimes. So I want you guys to understand that, all right? This is why most human beings can't have a stock chart of how much their real estate is, okay? Because real estate will fluctuate 1% to 2% every single day forever, okay? And if you go crazy, and let's say I own a $500,000 house, my house just... My net worth went up $5,000 today. It went down $5,000. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Freak you out. Okay. So I want everybody to understand that this is how human beings work. This is a fundamental sales principle that you can use for anything in life. That being said, if I have a $600,000 house, if I'm going to get 30% off of it, someone is less likely to say yes to that versus if you have a $125,000 house. So the key thing I'm trying to break down to you guys today is your average ARV has to be below $450,000 for you to get a lot of good discounted deals. Over a long period of time to get as many discounted deals as possible, I found the average ARV should be below 350, 400, but for a general rule across the entire board, more or less 450,000. The reasoning behind this is about 89% of all counties in the United, I think there's over 3,600, 3,000, over 3,000 counties in the United States of America. And if you're international watching this, counties are basically uh, political district zones within a state. So basically how places are divided on, it basically goes from, it basically goes from city, county, state, country. Okay, we have the United States. We have New York, and then we have like Nassau County, and then we have Westchester or whatever counties in Nassau County. Okay, definitely not Westchester though. But it, that's just basically how it works, okay? And so it, it, that's basically how things are divided up with governments and all that fun jazz, okay? So now we understand that, we have to find what mixes, 
Okay, we so we know that eighty. We have to go to the eighty nine percent of counties that have a AR, average ARV below eighty nine percent, and then we need to go find places with high populations in those counties. That's all we have to do. The basis on this is good discounts plus good cash buyers equal money, right? Like, duh, that's how we find a good wholesaling market. Now, this seems like a crazy advanced training I'm doing today, but if you can get dis if you can find a place where you can get good discounts and you have a place where there's a lot of buyers for to buy those discounted things, you can make some moolah. All right. That is the point. No guru, no anyone, no, nobody else really breaks this down or shares this because these are the secrets they hide behind a six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand, eleven thousand dollar coaching program that I just get for you for free. So I gurus cry every single time they watch this. They're crying more than Patriots fans today, okay? And it's just, it's sad. And we love our Patriots fans, but I have to go out after him because my heart was broken last week and the week before that. But it's a good day today. <laughs> but really, the next question, this is just a string of events that people get very stressed out over. But how do I find a market like that? This is the next big question I get. Zach, how do I find a market like this? You are in very good luck because... I would say probably over half of every county in the United States is like this. There's over half. So there's plenty of US of A, baby, to go around for everybody. I, I, want, I want you guys to understand there's plenty of places for us to be wholesaling, okay? Plenty. So, so don't be stressing out over it. So what I want to do is actually share my screen right now. I'll actually show you some interesting statistics so you can see it. Now, this is when I get in nerd mode. But I want to use a little cool tool. Okay, I'm going to put it in the comments. I'm, I'm actually going to paste it in the comments. And what I want you guys to do is do it with me. And so we can actually see. So this is going to be the simplest, easiest chart to see exactly. Pretty simple of uh, what my average ARV for my home price is going to be. So let's just share my screen right here so you can absolutely see. So this is, I put in the comments. But this is from NAR, our favorite people in the world. They are the greatest on earth. We love the National Association of Realtors. And with their millions and millions of dollars they get in, they do some research. And they got some pretty cool charts here, okay? This is basically from the Federal Housing Finance Agency. But pretty much from here, this is a map of the United States. And you know I love geography and maps. I can figure out pretty quickly here, this is the average median home price per county. And as you can see here, Red is more expensive, and then you go down here to uh, basically this. This takes a lot of CPU and RAM. <laughs> kind of funny, but you can click it and it'll show. So let's click here. I want to find only places in the United States that have an ARV, the county of below 150. 41.2% of all counties are actually in this range. Kind of crazy. The problem with this really low scale is there's not a big population center of this. There are some, but there's not a big, massive one. Okay, so let's kind of get out of that and let's kind of see. Let, let's just use an example. So let's go here to Palm Beach County. Palm Beach County is kind of on the bubble here, but 453,000. It's kind of outside the range we want. We could make it work, but that's pretty close, right? So you see that that's in the bigger orange here, okay? I would say for most people, the best bang for your buck is going to be right here, that 150 to 350. Because you got to remember, yes, I did say some bad schmack talk about how we want lower prices and high population. But when you do wholesale houses in the 150, 350 range, you make more money per deal too. There's less deals, but you make more money per deal. And this is the best range right here, 150 to 350, where you get those 50, 60 thousand dollar deals. The 350 to 550, that's when you're playing with fire. Uh, this is where I usually play with. So my actual my home county right here, um, St. Lucie County is about 344. That's the best sweet spot. But I'm telling you, this is where you get your 60, 70, 80, even hundred thousand dollar deals. You just gotta be a little careful here, okay? So you see this area, I think this is Den, uh, this area, Wyoming. So this area, Wyoming is like rich uh, ski country. So like this is the best range right here. So I want everyone to click on that, look at it and really just do your math here. So like 
you look here, we can play around and really see, right? And we can go around here. This looks like Williamson, Tennessee. It's probably Nashville region, but like this area is a little more expensive. We go a little east, we go north, we go south, we go everywhere. It's interesting, right? Ottawa County's got nothing, but like you got Livingston, you got Wish to Know. I uh, got some interesting areas, right? Monroe, Wood County. You go here, Delaware County looks interesting, right? You got Knox County, Ohio. You got all these areas. Then you look at the populations. For example, here, I go to Santa Barbara. That's pretty expensive, right? Pretty expensive, pretty expensive. That's LA County, pretty expensive. San Bernardino is a little expensive, but you can still make it work, right? And you just kind of look around here and you can really do the math. Now, you got to understand one thing here. You got Clark County, 450 is decent, but like you got to make your decision from there. But like, a lot of these areas you can really make work. And I want you just to see the population because I think a lot of people really think that a lot of these markets are outside their reach. And the truth is they are not. They are still within your reach. And I want you to understand that they are still in your reach in wholesaling real estate. So I want you guys to understand that don't stress out over being the perfect market. Because if you look at these two, 89% of them are, are in there and you can make them work. Now, once you start getting these areas, obviously avoiding them, but like you guys, you can make these work very well. And, and I want you guys to understand this. Like this is how make a big bucks in wholesale and real estate. Just do a little bit and get it going. Right. So I, I, I just, I'm just letting you guys think, think independently guys and gals, but like, Ooh, chairs playing with me today, but just think independently, right? If you see maps like this, you see data like this, and you're going to start understanding that like a lot of counties actually fit in this little range. And so we now we understand the prices. How do I understand the populations, right? Pretty simple, right? Let, let me show you some of the population centers so we can see it. So like really quick, I'm just going to look at county populations USA, right? And that, it's so we go to census for this one, but we can actually look at population centers and then divide it from there. So let me look. So you see this, this is by population right here. So if we go here and see it, right, we, we got all the populations and all I'm going to do is just go here. And these are the biggest uh, populations in the United States. I can make a CSV, do all my fun, crazy jazz, but like, these are populations of the millions, and I can keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, and these are good areas. For example, uh, Horry County, uh, South Carolina, I go search that. That is going to be the Myrtle Beach Conray uh, area. Not bad, not, not bad. Hamilton County is really good too. Uh, Stark County, uh, Ottawa County is good. They didn't have much data there. It was interesting, but like you go like look at all these areas with bigger populations. You just gotta mix them together. And you can do it. So like you can go to the poorest counties in the United States, right? And you go with the biggest population by the poorest. Those are other ways you can do it. But like Bronx County is not gonna be good. But these are other areas where there's not a lot of income on here, but the problem is they're not big populations. Now, the issue is you might be like, oh my gosh, it's gonna be the best wholesaling areas ever. I'll tell you the truth. A lot of poor areas are not the best because a lot of cash buyers don't like them. Uh, these are not huge, massive, insane. Cato Parish is actually probably the best one out of here. But areas strict with the poverty in the United States are actually not the best. Uh, once you get a little lower and the population goes up, it's not good. So you can use this website. It's going to give you some interesting statistics on counties in the United States. So it will give me some more interesting data here. Uh, but you can really go throughout here and, and play with it yourself. This is, I think, worldpopulationreview.com. I'll put the link in, in here for you. But, like, you can go out here and look at it. Like, Westmore County. Let's look at that. That is going to be, like, out, just the area outside of Pittsburgh. Absolutely amazing market to be going after. There's so many of these little areas that nobody – I don't think – I'm the first wholesaler to probably ever talk about Westmoreland County. Okay? It's just a, it's an area outside of Pittsburgh, right? And so you just got to start rethinking the way that you are going out, going after out here and finding these wholesaling deals. Because I truly believe that if you go out here and just start independently doing your own little research, like 15, 20 minutes, finding the perfect market, you'll be able to sell your deals for as much money as you possibly want to do. And you do very well, right? Get the data, 
and it will lead you to your success, right? And so that's the big part about today I, I want to talk about, right? And so the last question here is like, how do I find the best areas in those markets? What what type of areas in those markets actually give me the best results possible? Now, let's break this down and, and let's really share actually how to find the best areas uh, in those wholesaling real estate markets. So once I find the perfect market, what areas should I be going after? What, what is the perfect one? So let's break down. There's basically four ways to find them. Okay. Let's, uh, oh, I just revealed that one. All right. We're fine. All right. Number one, the best way to find the top zip codes in your market is just ask cash buyers. This seems really crazy, really advanced, in, insane, but just ask your cash buyers exactly what areas you're looking to buy. I promise you, when you start asking your cash buyer these things, it, it's going to be eye-opening because a lot of people don't even ask their cash buyers, oh, what's your criteria? And then they're like, oh, whole city. Okay, fine. Boom. Just quiz them. What areas are perfect for What areas are hottest right now? What areas are you finding the best? And you just use those areas. Because when you go back to selling your deal, if you're struggling with selling deals, you say, hey, remember you told me to get the zip code? Well, I got a deal in the zip code. And you kind of make them feel bad. And now they got to buy your deal, right? It's kind of throwing them back at them. But like that's how you get your deal sold. Number two, very important. Find the cash sales per person ratio. Now, there's two ways to find cash sales in the last month, two months, year in your county or your city, wherever, zip code, wherever. Uh, there's two big ways, right? Number one, probably the easiest way for most people. If you have an account for zachdata.com or listrei.com, I do recommend you probably go there. It'll actually get you the cash sales. You can write it down, do your analysis per zip code. You do all that stuff. There's a list source hack, which I show for free in my free wholesaling course freewholesaling.com. I recommend everybody watching this. Go to freewholesaling.com and you can see exactly how to do it. Uh, but find the cash sales per person ratio. So you find how many cash sales were happening in that zip code and then find how many people are living in that zip code and make a ratio. Because the, a lot of people find this. It's like looking at uh, crime rates. And so if you look at the crime rate, so if I look at how many, I can't say this word, but like, you know, let's say vandalism. How many vandalisms, how many acts of vandalism happen in a city? And I say, oh my gosh, there was 3,000 incidents of vandalism in Dallas. Oh my gosh. And in my own county, there's only 50 in the last year. My city's so much safer. But if you look at it, maybe Dallas has less incidents of vandalism per thousand people than your own city and county, right? And that's a big problem I think a lot of people have when they look at statistics. They look at just the number in general, but they don't look in general how many of something happens per person. And so this is why you think that the United States is the richest, richest country in the world. Uh, it is by the amount of sheer people and sheer economic you know, power, but the most money per person, I think it's like Luxembourg or something like that. And so you can look at it both ways. It's like, if I look at somebody and they're from this country, they're most likely to make over a hundred grand. And we are Luxembourg, except for the United States. There's a lot of people making less than hundred K per year in the United States. Relatively, if I go to Luxembourg, not a lot of, not a lot of people in Luxembourg, like, so their economy is not big, but it's just another way to look at things. Right. And so I'm just wanting everybody to understand this, that like find the cash sales per person ratio. It's going to be very big. Okay. Now the number three part, of really, really good wholesaling areas that I absolutely love. This is where I find a lot of success. Shh, this can be a big secret, but find people bragging on Facebook groups. And I'm not saying this to bring people down for bragging or doing these things, but I see a lot of wholesalers, like a lot. And I'm just telling you this because this is a true thing I've done. No guru will tell you about it. They don't like saying it. They think it's a dirty tactic. I think selling courses is dirty tactics. That's just me. I found kids, and I call them kids because they're 16, 17, 18 years old, even 23 years old my age, call myself a kid, whatever you want to do. A lot of newbies will go out here and they'll become very successful very fast. And it's not because they're so good at wholesaling and they're just the man or the woman or the, the gangster out here doing it. But they struck gold in the perfect market, like the perfect market. I found a lot of guys and gals, a lot of teenagers 
They're just in the right place at the right time, right? And they do drawing for dollars, reverse drawing for dollars, and they, they write all this stuff. And they, they, they hold their, their check like, we got my check. And on that check, I always look at it, and it's got like the property address. And it's so funny because I'm like, why did you do that? You just gave to the entire wholesaling community in these Facebook groups what property you just wholesaled. And now I know that this kid that got a $40,000 assignment fee who knows nothing in this zip code, I'm going to go after that zip code really hard. And this is another thing too. And this is, I hate to say it, this is very mean, but I absolutely love doing this, okay? Now, this is some... This is, some, this is some secrets I'm about, I'm about to drop on you. We're, we're, I'm going to show you how to steal your guru's top cash buyers. Now, most gurus are broke. There are some gurus that make a lot of money, so you can use them for them. But there's also a lot of gurus that do a couple deals. So let's break down how to steal your competition's top cash buyers. Really easy to do. So when I was doing virtual wholesaling, there was one guru there in this unnamed market. I will not speak of this market. This is a market I did very well. I, I don't really ever talk about this market. And I keep this market on the hush-hush. And I'm not going to mention the name because I still virtually wholesale me and my team here. And we do deals here. But there's one little problem there. And not a big guru, but who's making decent money? Three, dollars $400,000 a year in assignment fees. Not a bad person. But... I wanted to steal their cash buyers. I just want to go in there, just destroy them. And um, I wasn't able to make 400K in that specific market because I just had too many people. I was working my own market, other markets, but I was able to get a couple six figures that year uh, doing it. And this was about a couple years ago. Now I stole their top cash buyers and my competitions in that market's top cash buyers in under a week. And I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. Number one, pretty simple. I started just calling cash buyers and every single cash buyer I talked to, I asked them very specific questions. These are questions you get at freehosting.com. Literally, if you ask these specific questions, you'll be able to steal your cash buyers, uh, your top competition cash buyers pretty quick. You ask them, how many wholesalers have you bought from the last year? And they'll say, I bought from five wholesalers last year, about 30 properties. Now, most people say, okay, cool. Boom, 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 boom. Eh, do not. Uh, to stop right there, this is how you go even further. Which wholesalers did you buy from? Oh, I bought from Johnny Homebuyers or you know Johnny Appleseed. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I said this to myself. I'm like, Johnny Appleseed is the guru. Guess what I did? How many of those 30 properties you bought from Johnny Appleseed? I bought I bought most of my bought most of Johnny Appleseed's deals last year. I said, oh. You bought most of Johnny Appleseed's deals last year. Hmm. Guess what I did? I looked at Mr. Cash Buyer LLC on public records, and I saw the 30 properties he bought for cash. I found exactly the 25 zips. Because I asked the cash buyer for proof. I found the 25 properties he wholesaled to Johnny Appleseed. Johnny, uh, Johnny Appleseed wholesaled to him. Guess what I did? I found, oh my gosh, Johnny Appleseed only wholesales deals in three to four zip codes in the city. Guess what Zach did? He started wholesaling those three to four zip codes, went from a deal every other month to two deals a month in that market. Boom. Right? And this is all by asking questions. I didn't go to Johnny Appleseed and be like, tell me your top markets. Because he would say, F you, Zach. And, you know, walk away. I just did the next, but you know why cash buyers have no loyalty. Cash buyers have loyalty their, to their own money. That's why they will tell because plus of all, if you get their property information, their company information, they don't care. It's not John and Appleseed's deal. They have no loyalty. They're looking to buy from every wholesaler. They don't care. They'll cheat on their wholesaler seller to get another deal. They don't care. Okay. Like they legit don't care. Okay. About the whole wholesaling fighting. Cause they, 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 they think competition's best because it undercuts people and gives you, gives them the best deals. Right. Yeah. I, I, I just want you to understand that this is how you do it. A lot of gurus do not like it, but it's true. 
Cash buyers have no loyalty to your guru. They have no loyalty to me. They have lo no loyalty to my cash buyers. They don't care. They'll sell you out in a second. That's why I sell my deals to a lot of cash buyers. But once you start doing that, once you start selling your deals to those type of cash buyers, your, your competition is going to be upset at it. And Johnny, obviously, I don't think he even watches my stuff. But what I could tell you is just find people bragging Facebook groups, find the top wholesalers, start finding cash buyers that they're selling their deals to, and then boom, it will work really good. Now let's bring it up one more notch. I want to bring it up one more notch because I'm feeling spicy today, okay? I'm feeling spicy, and I really want to make a guru mad today. I really want to make a guru's day bad. I want to make your top wholesaler in your markets day bad. I do. I'm saying that really nicely, really nicely and really confidently. And I'm not saying this be mean or try to lose people money, but I'm going to do this so you get the best info dang possible. Now, this is going to be the final nail in the coffin for your top competition. So you, the people, can have the actual value because not every wholesale in your market watches me on YouTube. Not. No, not even close. There's only a select few amount of wholesalers that actually watch my content on a regular basis. So if you're watching this and you're in X market, you're going to be one of the few people that actually have access to this. Because I'll tell you, I talked to my peeps out in like Charleston, okay? South Carolina. There's only two or three people doing reverse drawing for dollars in Charleston out of hundreds and maybe thousands of wholesalers. Not a lot of people actually taking action in those little places. Not little, but like decent places. So that means you're watching this, you're going to have a huge upper hand advantage over your competition in virtual wholesaling and regular wholesaling real estate. So let's break down the final nail in the coffin, okay? And before I break down the final nail in the coffin, I'm going to uh, get you guys upset, riled up, but make sure you go to freelisting.com and exactly ask the right questions. Because if you do if you do not ask the right questions, I do say you will get in a lot of trouble. You will not find the cash buyer. The cash buyer will not reveal the top places and you will get your results will not be as good. Go through freelisting.com. Make sure you guys subscribe to this YouTube channel. Make sure you like this video. If you did not subscribe, make sure you subscribe. Hit the bell notification so you don't forget it. And let's get into it. Let's go to number four here. You were just going to ask the title companies. Now that this seems like, oh, what are we talking about? Here's another thing. Figure out the top title company for your competition or guru. Because a lot of them have pictures of the company in the title company. And they say, oh, I'm at ABC Home Title. And we just bought Johnny's deal. And they do the little speaking thing. Oh, he went to ABC Title. Huh. Guess who else has no loyalty to a wholesaler? A title company. And the title company closes usually 100% of deals for your competition or the guru, whatever, okay? So if I know my competition only deals with ABC Title Company, I'm going to call ABC Title Company up, ask them some questions, make sure they're wholesaling friendly, and then ask them a little nudge. Hey, ABC Title Company, I'm excited to start doing wholesaling deals and using you as my sole title company. Make sure they know, hey, money, what are title companies? What are cash buyers? And what are realtors? All three of them. What are the only thing that they truly are loyal to at the end of the day? Their wallet. They're truly loyal to their wallet and the money. It's a money game. Sorry to say it. Some people are different, but most of them are not. Title Company wants you to pour in as many wholesaling deals as possible. They want all your competition together under one title company so they can make the most money off title insurance and all these things, okay? So when you ask your title company, hey, Mr. Title Company, before I start wholesaling, I, obviously I'm going to use you for everything. What areas have you found the best for wholesaling? What like zip codes in the city are the best for wholesaling? So I can start going after this, so I can start getting deals and bringing them to you. Got to say that in that specific way. Oh, John, oh, you know, we have found that a lot of the really good investment properties and wholesaling deals are in this zip, this zip, and this zip. And they're going to give the Johnny Appleseed info, your other competition's top info. And they're going to give the secret intel, the top zip codes in your market. The title companies are just going to give them away because they want your money. 
Guys, if you got some value from that, let me know in the comment. Like I'm telling you, that is how you're going to do it. And if you do what I say, you're going to, first of all, number one, find the best cities for wholesaling real estate and find the best areas in those cities for wholesaling. And that is going to give you the best success possible. It's going to make your competition cry. It's going to make your guru cry. And it's going to make your wallets fat. That is the point. So guys, that's my little uh, talk today on exactly how to find the hottest zips in your virtual wholesaling markets and the best virtual markets in general. Uh, if you've got any value from this, hit that like button, subscribe. And what I want to do is answer some questions today on exactly how to help you become the best wholesaler possible. So let's get into it. Let's see how I can help the people out and really help you become the best wholesaler possible. So uh, let's answer some questions today. I'm excited. I'm happy. The Dolphins finally made the playoffs today for some stinking reason. So Dolphins made the playoffs. So that was exciting. Terrible game, but very exciting. But yeah, guys, we're coming to money season 2023. Love to see it. Uh, but yeah. All right. Let's see here. We got a question here from, where is it? I want to answer this one. See here, where is it? Uh, trying to find it. Uh, okay, right here. Um, hello, Zach. I'm writing notes down from one of your videos, uh, but I don't think you mentioned where to take the agreement to the title company. Uh, do I take a title company after I find my buyer? So you take your purchase and sale agreement to the title company right when you get it signed with the seller. And then from there, you bring a cash buyer through, you get that signed, and then you bring that to the title company. Uh, pretty simple. That's how you do it. I want people to understand that too. Uh, Brandon, is this recorded? Uh, it's being recorded, so it will be on the uh, Zach and YouTube channel, but it's currently live right now. So Vernon wants to know, tell them how to find the top wholesaler so uh, they will know and understand what you're saying. All you really got to do is ask the title company that. Look on Facebook and ask local wholesalers who the top wholesalers are, and they'll probably give them pretty easy for you. See, AO Chronicles is going to do that for his own local market. Love it, love it, love it. And got to get the free game. Love it. All right. Uh, also on top of that, I'm going to give you guys the streamer link. So I'm going to put it in the comments. So if you guys want to hop on and actually talk to me one-on-one -on -one and uh, get your answer, get your questions answered, I'd love to do that and help you out. So uh, let's go here. Let's see. So, hey, Zach, what is your method of determining which markets have buyers? Uh, population. I mean, every market with a high enough population has plenty of cash buyers. It's just a way to invest, right? It's like another vehicle. There's always landlords. There's always rentals. And uh, it's always the one of the best areas possible for it. So, yeah, there's always going to be buyers for everyone here. All right. Uh, let's do some more ones here. So, let's see what we got here. First, we got Joel. What is up? You're muted. What's going on, Zach? It's been a minute, man. I'm blessed, man. How are you? What's up? Well, one awesome shirt. I'm glad they're in the playoffs. Big fan. Um, man, um, my question is going to be about today. Actually, I've been actually taking some some crazy action, and I had my first um, inspection, like in person. So I went to the house. I, um, the lady, this is, this is kind of weird, but I texted the lady a while back. She never texted me. She ended up texting me like a couple of days ago. I called her back. She, in the message that she sent me, she sent like, she said that she wanted like 270. This is in St. Cloud. Uh, so I drove like almost two hours to go see the house, um, which is kind of far. Yeah, it's kind of far. I, I I, well. I wanted to do it just for the experience, um, since it was my first one. Um, but she first texted me that she wanted like two seventy for the house, 
where she's at, the ARV, they're about three, three, I will say 315. Um, then like the next day she texts me and she says she wanted 230. So she dropped on her own. I didn't even message her or anything. She just mess she messaged me back to back almost. And I went to see the house. The house was way worse than than I thought. I, I took a bunch of pictures and stuff like that. Um and I told her and you know, I went and I said, Well, I, I did what you were what you said the, a couple of the, a couple of videos back. I haven't been able to get on the live because you guys change your time. So I'm at work when you guys are on there, but I've been watching it after work. And you said, you know, you whatever... Sunday live streams, man. Rick goes uh, Monday at five too. Yes. But the rest of the week, I'm still at work until like five fifteen, So I miss it. Two, two one-on-ones a week. I think that's enough. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's still good. It's still good, man. But I like to watch it live. You know, you guys are awesome. You guys are freaking the dream team you catch two batman. lives a week and watch the replays i think you'd be yeah fine. you guys are like the batman and robin of this thing um so i actually did what you say you're like you know the uh low lmo yeah the lowest uh lao the, uh, lao yeah LAO. Least allowable offer yeah so i was like okay the least allowable offer was like 200 i was gonna offer her and then i said okay whatever so i offered her 170 um, I did what you said, just go as low as possible, but she said no. And the thing, the big thing was that after she talked to me, she had already contacted a, a, uh, a real estate agent. And, and I told her, I said, Hey, see if your real estate agent can hold it until like Monday till if, if he decide I'll, I'll go and see it on Sunday, which it was today, obviously. And I was like, I'll let you know to see if I if we agree on a price. And if we if we don't agree on a price, then you could post it on on, you know, on you could tell the realtor to move forward. But the thing was that she couldn't get it, she couldn't get the realtor to stop it. And they posted it last night um as a for sale through through a realtor. So I don't know. I, I offered her the 170, she went down another ten thousand to two twenty. But the house needs like a full gut. It's like sixty grand of of repairs. I don't know if that's gonna be enough for your MAO. You figured out what would the cash buyer buy for it? Buy it for? Like ARV is gonna be like three fifteen. I I don't care about the ARV. I care about the MAO. Oh, a cash buyer. Um, maybe a cash buyer would. Probably uh, the highest I would say is, is going to be like 220, 225. Okay. And how much was she looking to sell it for, do you? She told me 220. That was like the lowest. And that's how that's how we yeah. left it. I mean, Joel, you got to do the math, bro. Yeah. If it is going funny. to buy it for 220 and she wants to sell it for 220. You know, that's not ideal. Yeah. Yeah. And did you ask her why didn't she list it with a realtor? What did she say? She said she was already talking to them and. The realtor told her that she, they could get her 280 for the house, and I was like, "That's impossible!" Like the houses that they have there, literally the houses that they have there, they are ready to move in. They're at 335. There's. Oh, you know what it would have happened if I if that was my seller and I was doing this acquisition yeah. work? I would say, "Why ain't going with the realtor?" They would said, "I'm already talking to him." I said, "Great, you should list it with them." End of story. And I would never sell the house and let them list the property. That's how it would have happened, because she she was going to do that no matter what, and guess yeah. what? She eventually did. Yeah, that's I, I, I wouldn't. Even, that conversation would have ended right there. And I have a lot of those conversations, and a I, lot of people, a lot of my acquisitions agents don't like that. They get really upset, like, "Oh, you should convince her for the cat." I'm not here to convince anybody. I'm not here. Okay, if they want to go with the realtor, I say go with them. I've never had a good deal. And someone said that and they left and I tried to convince them. It took me a long time to figure this out. If they want to go with a realtor, let them go with a realtor. That is 95, 98% of real estate transactions should go with a realtor. She was just part of it. Even yeah. if it needed work. I, I was I was kind of leaning towards that, but then when she because she dropped so much 
because they they literally they did post it for 280 but then she told me 230 and i was like man and i'm like i i was your mao yeah the yeah the mao is 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 not is around that same that same price um did you condition her at all yeah i did i did and so you conditioned her what was the initial offer to her 170 170 what'd she say when she uh when i told her that she's like well i'm just uh, if it's 170 um she's like i'm just gonna leave it as it is and just move forward with the with the realtor okay so you said so that's a no you're gonna say no to that i kind of told her i was like okay so uh, i said okay so you're saying no we're not gonna move forward and i was like well what is i asked her i was like what would be your i've heard uh, your dad kind of say this and he's like what would be your like if you had the money right here right now what would be your you know your your all-out cash yeah, right yeah and she said the lowest she would go is 220. yeah it's not a deal yeah okay so That's not every not every appointment's a deal yeah and, and i would probably never even gone that appointment um just because I, she was stuck on that price yeah I, I figured out my mao was 220. i would ask her if she would take 210 right now if she said yes to that then i'd probably go because i know at least i can get it on a contract for 210. Um, unfortunately, yeah. I don't go on appointments unless the MAO can be below her price. Her asking price is below my MAO. Yeah. And at least I can make some money going there. Yeah. That's, that's what I kind of, I, I kind of knew that, but I wanted to feel that experience. I was like, okay, she's, she's like, okay with me going. And she was, she, you know, the first time I talked to her, she was like pouring herself out. And then the second time that I talked to her, when I when I was like, okay, I'm verifying, because I called her back um, to verify the appointment. She's like, yeah, just so you know, that that was the situation. And then she told me, basically on the second call, which I had kind of had already um, set the appointment to go when she told me about the realtor. So it was kind of there's experiences, man, and then there's bad. Ex there's good experience and bad experiences. Yeah. Like this you know boxing? Me a lot. Do you like boxing? Yeah. Kind of, yeah, yeah. How stupid would it be for you to say, I want to get knocked out so I know what it feels like for the experience of getting knocked out for boxing? <laughs> That's true. The stupid we should do sparring for experience. Yeah. That's not bad. Let's do a boxing match for experience. That sounds good. But to get knocked out deliberately de deliberately makes no sense at all. Yeah. And so knowing that. There's not even qualified seller. You're you're already walking into a bad bad just appointment. Yeah. Um. So just be smart. I don't need to waste four hours of your time, two hours, two and back. Um. There's better uses of your time. And yeah, good definitely, man. Yeah, but I did learn a lot. I, honestly, even even if I kind of knew the expectation that I, it wasn't gonna be that good of a situation for me, um, unless she unless she took that one seventy, um. I, I just want like I really learned a lot from that experience. Is even doing the walkthrough and just okay. talking to to the to the you know to the seller. It was it was amazing. But I wanted to get your input because obviously you guys you guys do this for Respect no. for, for fun. <laughs> yeah, it's baseball, man. Like the batting average ain't a hundred. Yeah, no, hey, I, I, you can't I hit know. a homer. It's like just keep yeah. going. Yeah. Can't solve nah, it, right? Just go to the next nah, one. Literally uh, on the way back, I was still just doing like driving for dollars and doing all that. So I'm, I'm nothing has changed. I'm still motivated. I'm still trying to move right. forward. But, Keep it up, bro. Um, and also, um, man, I had another question, but um, I don't know. I'll I, if I remember, I, I'll have to write it down. It's just been a crazy day. Um, all right, man. Well, thanks, man. I, I really appreciate it. Again, you guys are awesome. I can't. I can't believe you guys do this for free. It is is amazing. But All right, uh, man. I appreciate it, man. I'm trying to stop people from going to appointments, like you just did. Yeah, uh, it's gonna help a lot of people out. Okay. Yeah, I do. I All appreciate right. it, man. Keep it up. Have Love a good one, man. And yeah, you guys have a good one too. All right. Boom. All right. I love it. Tell you guys, just change your mindset. I'm telling you all out here, okay? Please change your mindset. If you keep going, you keep having a good mindset to help you out.
Christopher, what is up? Yo, Christopher. Bye, Chris. Al. Hey, what's up there? What's up? How are you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, one, I'd like to appreciate, like you said, you're providing this free stuff because uh, buying all the mother of uh, softwares and stuff, is, it dig deep in your pocket. <laughs> so, like, right. recommend you on that for one. But uh, the question I got, um, I'm in the process of trying to get a deal. Um, I'm not really too keen on doing the comps and all that stuff right now. So, it's, um, the house, the asking price is 270 so how, how do I go about um, trying to get that deal? Okay. So let's just, what, what market are you in? I'm in um, California. We're in California. But most of my research, my, um, I do out of state so much. Where? You know, California's a high market. Yeah. Where in yeah. California are you at? Uh, in uh, East Bay. East Bay, okay. What, like Oakland? No, uh, like Oakland, Richmond. Okay, cool. You're with that area. And what general area is your virtual market in? Um, virtually, um, the state? Um, I've got actually, I'm, I'm scattered. <laughs> okay, that's fine. All right. So, asking price two seventy. So, do you know what the general population of the county in that area? Um, I just can't. I say I, I be getting these deals coming in. It's in um, Henrico, Virginia. Okay, that's a great market, dude. Okay. All right. So if somebody's asking 270, generally what we have to do is we got to figure out what the comps are. So I know you okay. say you're not keen on the comps, but comps aren't really that difficult because you're in Virginia. Just I would go to Zillow and let me know if you can help with it and just look at the last 12 months in general, what properties are selling for in that area for the same type of property. What are three twos in the area selling for that are that old? And you can uh -huh. generally figure out what they are, right? Okay. Um, I like to do price per square foot and just get a general range. And then from there, figure out if your property needs repairs or not. Throw on freelsen.com. But roughly, if somebody's asking 270 for it, the thing could be worth 100 grand. The thing could be worth uh, 500,000. We don't know. Mm -hmm. We've got to figure out how much it's worth. So one example I always say, and this because it's just such a neat, like a niched out thing, but like, what is a signed uh, Michael Jackson Thriller album worth? Do you know what it's worth right now? No. <laughs> I have no idea. Right. Well, I'm going to go to eBay and see what they are selling for, and then I'll figure out generally what it is. So if somebody's yeah. asking $1,000 for it, I'm like, that might be a deal, but it also might not be a deal. I have no idea. Right. So we're, we're just going to go on Zillow and see what similar ones are selling for. So um, would Zillow be a best uh, research spot or either – because I said I know a little bit about Redfin and all the rest of them. So which Redfin's one would be Redfin. best to use? Huh? I like Redfin also. Yeah, I do a lot of research on Redfin too. That's someone like Redfin. They give you a bit more detail, yeah. Okay, let's do general. What's the estimated value on Redfin on that property? I don't know yet. I'm just not, I just got this deal um, well, tell it to me. as we speak. It. <laughs> well, what's the estimated value on Redfin? Start. Let's start out from there. Okay, hold on. Let me check. I pop that up. Okay. Get my calculator out too. Because it's a three bedroom. One one point five one and a half a bath. Uh, square foot is uh, 2051. Let me see. Uh, I'm trying to do this on my phone. Okay, it's uh, 299. 299, okay. So that's just a very rough estimate. Like, that's not a good comp at all. Uh -huh. But for the sake of time, let's say the comps are 280 on it, all right? Okay. Like, you got to do your own research. It might be 250. It might be 320. But let's right. just say it's 285. Okay. Let's just be nice. All right. Let's say it's worth 285. Do you have any data on this? Like, does it need a new roof, repairs? Anything? No. Like I, say, I, I just got this deal um, sent to me 
as we were speaking. So I was going to do the, start working right. on the VLC crowd. I can get, close it up. So let's just cut to the chase. I'm, I'm sick of waiting around. I'm, I'm, I'm sick of just thinking what it could possibly be worth. Right. It's 35 grand in repairs. Uh-huh. Okay. Anything on top of that, just extra money for us. Right. And let's offer, let's make an MAO. I would say an MAO, which is our max offer, I think it should be below 207000 on this. Mm-hmm. So if they're asking two seventy, you said? Yeah. If they're asking two seventy, they're pretty much asking, what is it? They're asking ten percent off what the thing's actually worth. That's probably not a good deal. Okay, yeah, because I'm looking at the pictures and and the pictures as far as like you say, the repair of uh, stuff, it looks like it's not that bad. Say so maybe Fifteen to twenty, maybe ten to fifteen dollars uh, estimate and repair. Okay, but still, you gotta understand this. They're asking ten. They're asking only a ten percent discount off their property. Uh huh. And you gotta realize to sell it with a realtor, it's already six percent. It's probably two, two percent to close it. That's eight mm-hmm. percent, and then two percent for negotiations, hassling all this stuff, uh, holding costs for putting it on the property for two or three months being vacant right they're, they're just they're wanting you to buy it for retail just for cash okay. so what you need to do is really before you even break it down we have to talk to the seller and see why they're wanting to sell the property okay and if they don't if they don't have a good reason what's the point of even pursuing this now if they say a really good reason we can talk a little more use the mctp approach and then from there we can give them a low ball offer okay but I, I I would be very wary when the asking price is that high, but here's the coolest part: we can always change the price. But you know what? We can't change. We can't change their motivation. Right. That's the one thing we can't. We can't change them wanting to sell it for more or less. But if their motivation's high, that's going to be a good indicator. Okay. So price is the least thing I care about when someone gives me a lead because I can always bring it down. I can't change when they want to sell. I can't change uh, technically, but I can't change the condition. I can't change the property itself, but I can change the price. So I want to figure out motivation. And then I'd probably honestly offer 210 on that and just see what they say. Okay. And see what happens. Hey, okay, dear. Why not? All right. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Well, keep uh, any questions outside of that? Uh, that's it. All right. We'll get out. Don't call him right now, but probably call him tomorrow. And then uh, let me know. No, no, he's waiting here. No, I would not. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Well, let me know how that lead goes, man. Okay, I will. Appreciate it. Boom. All right. Mason, what is up? Not much. Not much. Awesome, man. What's up? How can I help you out? So, first of all, thank you for always putting out knowledge and just giving, man. There's not many people like that out. There is. You just got to find them. But my question is, um, are you using uh, GPT-3 at all for any of your comps? Or I mean, comps is comps, but are you using it at all for anything? Um, for my business, not really. I mean, I'll use it for writing uh, scr- like emails to government agencies just for deals and stuff. Um, I'll use it for some things, um, but like not for an insane amount, right? Like I'll do it for my SMS scripts. Nothing crazy though. Like I, I did a whole video on it. I did a full breakdown. You watched that video? Um, I I don't think so. I don't think for so. an hour and a half. I went over exactly how to use Chat GBT for wholesaling. Okay, I'll watch. The that. best UK watch use that. cases I've personally found for it have been number one, writing emails for specific lists. So I went there like write an email on how requesting to pull the code violations for this county, and then I'll do it for you, and then you can. Copy and paste, send it to 100 agencies. Yeah. Um, I give it my SMS scripts and say, make it better. Include this, exclude that. And I gave him like 100 SMS scripts, rewrote them, did it like that. There's not an insane amount of use cases that's going to change the world for wholesaling today. But there are some that they're really good to be using. Now, it's going to get crazier. But every goo in the world is trying to find a way to sell you on this. Um, it's really good. There's a very limited amount you can do for it currently. Um, it'll expand more, and I'll keep you guys updated on it. New uh, another question. I mean, since Christian already, Christian was asking it, um, how often do you use Privy? Because I know Benson Benson Juarez, 
and he actually gave me an account for that and i've been using it since cool um and it's it's a uh i like it and i know that you've posted some videos talking about it before are you still using it at all or do you just predominantly focus your time on like zillow for sell by owners and stuff like that so let me actually i can calculate pretty quick how many times i used it in the past three months once i used it once in the past three months for a video on it that's pretty much it i don't use it and then um last question um what would you do so is there any like anything you can do about let's say so i had a deal where i was going to make uh the spread was forty thousand. i was going to pay twenty thousand in commission to two realtors that were involved and i was going to make twenty one thousand after that um the realtor that was involved on the buyer side um she went and she stalled the contract in other words like didn't sell and I didn't know like what I should do at the time. This was a while ago, um, like eight months ago or so. And so I just let it go and just kept trying to talk to her, see what was going on, why they weren't signing. And it was like nitpicking, like, oh, it's it's this, this or whatever. And then eventually the buyer did this? The buyer's agent. Buyer's agent who was a realtor did this. And then she backed out the day that it was gonna like the day the contract fell out. And then the next day went around and got in, uh, in touch with the seller and talked to the seller and got it under contract for, um, I think I had it under at 340 and I had sold it at 385, I believe. And she got it for 365 from the whole, uh, owner. And so in other words, just cut me out of it completely. And I was gonna pay her commission, pay the other realtor, but that doesn't matter. In other words, did that closed on it. Now the agents, uh, I guess who she was representing, they went and now they own it. Now, is there anything I can do? I live in Texas. Is there anything that I can do or should I just let it go? Move on. Just forewarn. I mean, you can sue them, but legally, um, it was done pretty well. It's kind of like crying the principal, you know, I mean, yeah. what they did was not right, but what they did is not legal. It's just more, right? more, yeah. Ethically. Yeah, not right. I guess. So unfortunately, it's like that's what I figured. Cutting a line illegal, not really. Yeah. There's no laws on how lines work. It's not the right thing, but you just had, you you had the wrong buyer. You probably didn't vet. I mean, did you I ask that real buyer how anymore. many wholesale deals they've bought before? Nope. I, I didn't watch your videos. I didn't watch your so videos. You should, that, that's the problem, dude. Yeah. No, it was 100. percent I, I didn't watch your videos. Through and go through you? the whole course. Can't show your proof. They can't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not and so that's the biggest problem I always have. So unfortunately, there's nothing you can do. And this is from a guy that last year had four deals attempted to be stolen from me. And I had to pay, I think, at least five grand last year of just lawyers. Not for any court filing, just threatening people. Five yeah. grand just to threaten people to stop trying to steal my deal. And it works every time. Yeah. And so as a guy that spends a lot of money on lawyers to stop people from stealing deals... I can actually sue them when I have it under contract when they have tried to steal my deal. Now, I think you kind of know this. What you should have done in that situation, because you're already too deep in the deal, you yeah. just keep their non-refundable deposit. And once you keep their non-refundable deposit, they get in a big they they get in big trouble. Rick also talks about this a lot, but you make sure their inspection period for them to actually buy it is before the contract's actually done. So you can get an extension yeah. if you really had to. Um, but yeah, that's just a bad person. Unfortunately, that's, that's real estate in general. You gotta ask better questions. Yeah, that, that was my bad. Cause I didn't, I didn't watch your videos and I recommend anybody who hasn't gone through your course, go through your course. It's very well put together. And it's just, it answered a lot of questions. I didn't know to vet. I didn't know about vetting. I didn't know about, um, Unfortunately, how to I get deal contract. Try to get stolen from me for me to actually do that. Yeah. And so I found 100% of people that are legit. I can go through those questions. But hey, you live and you learn, man. I mean, yeah, of course. Whatever. Of course. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it, Zach. Thank you. Thank you all right. for all that. And hey, I got nothing bad about Brown Privy. I just don't use it. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not a big MLS wholesaling guy. I do do it, but it's mostly people just sending me deals and uh, I, I do it from there. But I tell people, you can make a lot of money off Privy. All right, so if, uh, whoever the owner guy you said, I'll tell you, I, I talk to people that do a lot of deals off Privy. I just, I'm not the big guy on it. I think it's still better to do off market for your time. 
if there was a million of me, there'd be four of me just doing on market. Um, I, I found more money just doing, I've done better just doing virtual deals off market than I've had on market. But uh, if you're an agent, I think it's a good uh, thing too. Awesome. Well, I appreciate yeah. it, Zach. All right. Keep it up, man. Have a good one. Boom. All right. Next one we got Wendell. Hello there. How you doing? I'm blessed, man. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Blessed as well. Hey, awesome. I want to thank you for allowing me on your platform. And I thank you for what you and your dad is doing. You're always invited, man. Okay. Yeah, this is my first time actually getting on your live. <laughs> I, I, I know. I remember face as well. You know, okay. I hope to okay. see you more. And I'm oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey. To be a good wholesaler. That's what we're going to do. Well, this is this is the reason why I'm uh, FaceTime, you know, doing it live right now because I have big plans. All right. And the question, I, the question I have is I heard you mention about JVN, and I just want to know what is the process and how do we go about JVN with you and your dad? So let me tell you one thing. I think you're thinking on the wrong way. Okay. I don't want to JV with people unless they actually have to JV with me. I would okay. rather you make the full 10 grand on a deal than split it with me. Mm -hmm. I'm just being honest. I'd rather you make the full thing because right. I think it's better for you to do the whole process. There's a lot okay. of people that can't sell their deal without me. And we actually have to be the one that bring it to the finish line. They make 10 grand versus making zero off a of 20 right. our deal. So mm -hmm. if you're at a place I think if you get that contract, I could probably help you find the cash buyer enough. I, I, okay. I don't want to pay me with everybody. I just, there'd be too many yeah. deals for me to do. Now, obviously, I could say another way of just trying to get the most deals sent to me. But let's focus on helping you just get some contracts first. Okay? Right. Okay. So let, let's get you the full money, okay? I see. Sounds good. Let's do it. What's, all right. So what's your process? What marker are you in? What what? journey are you on in wholesaling where are you at what, what's going on well just like i said this is going to be a, it's actually just right out of, the uh, out of the box i just opened it up basically but uh uh what i've been listening to what you're doing and the route that i'm trying to go into uh i kind of want to merge with pre-foreclosure and i got also got a situation uh myself that i'm dealing with as possible uh, probate within the family. And that was one of the reasons why I really wanted to do a FaceTime with you. But in, tonight was unexpected. <laughs> and so um, I later on, I know I'm going to have some questions for, for you and your father dealing with a probate that I know that when we get to that point, um, what we should do. Uh, actually, it could be done right now, but I don't know. I need to read more on your program and figure out what I need to do and how I need to go about it. But that's one right there uh, that I know we're going to have to solve pretty soon. Uh, the other the other one is pre-foreclosure because of the, the lane that I'm trying to travel with other things I'm trying to do. Uh, pre-foreclosure. It doesn't really... I'm I'm game for all of them from what I've heard you teach on, you and your father teach on. Um I'm, it whatever comes my way, I'm fine. And I'm ready to try to work it. Okay, I like it. So I don't know if I answered the question, it's kind of broad. Um, I mean my answer was kind of broad. What 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 market are you in? Uh where I'm at? Yeah. I'm actually in Central Texas. Okay. We're in Central. Oh, what's the closest city to? Uh, well, Fort Hood, Temple, McLean. Okay. And I'm around Austin, Waco. Okay, so that's that's a good area. Um, you're not in Austin, right? You're kind of by Colleen. Yeah, I'm about seventy miles north of Austin. Okay, so you're not like in a crazy expensive area. So, all right, that's good. So, there's a lot you can do. Um, do you have a job right now? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm a driver. So, all right. So, unfortunately, you know, the best way to find deals is driving for dollars. But, unfortunately, it's something you do every single day. It's probably kind of annoying. Um, <laughs> yeah. well, I don't know how, how you feel, but um, you, you got a good job, you know. Um, you know, it, it's a great job what you got. So, 
Um, unfortunately, it's not the easiest job in the world, right? It's tiring, um, long hours, all these things, right? Uh, so right. here's the interesting. We have a lot of uh, truck drivers getting the whole thing. Mm-hmm. It's kind of funny. Uh, there's a lot of them. Um, right. It, it, but they're trying to get away from that truck, and that's what it is. They're trying to get into it. They're trying to get out of it, but like they, they yeah. do very well. And uh-huh. I can't pinpoint exactly why, but there, there's some key distinct thing on it. I think number one's in motivation, but um, there's always another drive. So you're, you're in good company, people trying to get into it, right? Um, right. Roughly every single week, what, when are you out, out of town? When are you in town? What, what's the schedule looking like? Well, right now... <clears throat> I've been on a, a, a on my break, and I'm ready, really, to just get out of get out of the truck right now. And I'm looking to try to do a deal, actually ASAP. Because like, you know, it's gonna the, the determination is gonna be on the deal that I get. You know, whether I, you know actually get back in it. You know, I'm, I'm self I'm self employed, so. Okay. Well, honestly, if you want to get a deal as soon as possible. What I would probably tell you to do is reverse drive for dollars pre foreclosures. Okay. It might not be the sexiest thing in the world, but that's if you want to get a deal as soon as possible, that's probably what I'd do. Okay. So driving for dollars and the pre foreclosure list would be the reverse drive for dollars. Yeah. Okay. Reverse where you put so a sticker on it. It's a, it's a decent amount of videos on there, but it's a very good education. You're going to have some knowledge on here to get started, but reverse mm-hmm. drive for dollars in a nutshell. Go, if you promise to go to freelson.com, I'll tell you, but basically what it is, you get sticky notes and you slap them on the house. Hey, right. this is Wendell. I had a quick question about your property. Please give me a call back. Then boom, put a hundred of those out. You'll get 40 calls back. Deal with people that want to sell their house. Boom. Like clockwork. Mm-hmm. I'd add probates, do that, and just do that. That's going to be your best point because you don't seem like the type of guy that wants to cold call 25 hours a week um, or like do these crazy long hours of marketing, right? No, I'm, I'm good with it. I'm, I'm right, been in sales point. and stuff. We can add it on. Yeah. I would huh? do reverse trying for dollars on top of that. I'm just saying because mm-hmm. you work a full-time job. And then if you want, you start cold calling those government lists that aren't answering back. Okay. And that's a very good duo, I would say. Now you say the government list that are not calling you back. Yeah, what did so you just reverse drive for dollars as much as you can. And right. Those type of properties that you can't actually get a hold of, call them instead. Oh, okay. Got you. I understand now. So if you do a hundred probates for reverse drawing for dollars and they get forty calls back, call the sixty that didn't call you. Mm-hmm. And then boom, that that'd be the best bank free buck for your time, and that'd be the okay. fastest way to get your deal. Okay, sounds good. Because while you're calling, you're also going to get inbound calls in. Right. It's all about getting that deal as soon as you can. Okay. If you're get your first deal in under two weeks, that's what you got to do. Okay. That sounds good. I, I think I can get it. All right, man. I'm, I'm motivated enough to get it, though. So you need to go to freelancing.com, though. Uh, go through the pre-foreclosure modules. Go through it all. Okay. But there's specifically a pre-foreclosure module because Wendell, here's the problem. Oh, Wendell, I'm in I, I'm in a pre-foreclosure. I'm in a foreclosure. I don't understand this process. What's going on? I, I need to sell it, but I think I can't. There's an auction date. You're gonna be like, wait, what's going on, right? Mm-hmm. Go through pre, the pre-foreclosure module. It's like an hour and a half, two hours. It has it okay. all broken down. There's like infographics, it shows you like exactly what to say where in the process they're at. You can actually pinpoint it. It makes it really simple. Uh, go through that. It's going to show you what to say, how to do it, the whole process. So you're going to be really knowledgeable when they call you about it. I see. Okay. you be good to go. That sounds good. I'm ready. All right. I'll get it, man. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. All right. Rooting for you, man. Keep it up. Uh-huh. Appreciate you. Oh. And uh, next we got Omar. Yo, Zach, how are you, man? Can you hear me? I'm clear, man. I'm doing great, dude. What's up? Sweet. Oh, you usually can't hear me. Or the last few times I I've know. stuck with that. Yeah. Now. You remember. Nice. Yeah. No, man, I just wanted to come on here uh, and tell you where I'm at. Uh, I have a list of about 1,200 leads, all vacant homes. Uh, but I'm wondering what I should do exactly with that 
Uh, I know I'm going to get a dialer uh, here in a couple weeks. Um, but how, I don't know exactly how a dialer works. Like, will I, just, will I be able to integrate all of that list? into the dialer you know 1200 feeds is a lot so yeah T look up online how it works but pretty much there's a lot of dialers use zackdialer.com use mojo dialer uh, you can use ready mode there's about three or four really call tools is a good one there's a bunch of them um honestly you can just try a free trial like zackdialer.com's got a free trial just try the free trial hmm. and then see how it works by just doing it for seven days you don't have to sign up for it but just yeah. try it out for free and just see how it works right like if you really want to and so you don't have to sign up dude I, i'd recommend you go through a free trial first before you even do it mm -hmm. hint hint you can always cancel it like right but honestly like just see how it works and if you have okay. questions you can ask the customer service people on it but really how it works is you just put the list in and then it will dial it it'll dial three at a time and then boom 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 and just you call faster on it yeah it's like a sentence explanation for it it's just a tool man it makes you call faster it doesn't make you better but it just makes you call faster yeah i'm thinking uh you know while i because i don't have the money for a uh, dialer yet i will here in a couple of weeks but i'm thinking uh in the time that i'm waiting to do that i'm just gonna learn how to pull other government lists and then just when i'm able to get the dialer just pop out the calls if you already can't like afford it right now or don't just don't do it like it just you don't have to man you can mm -hmm. do it just on uh true people search google voice you're good to go man yeah it's i know it's really important you said though for just because it is but you got no money like what don't, don't spend your last dollar doing it. it's not worth it it's worth it to me man all right then do it but like i'm just saying like don't feel like you have to there's a pressure to it yeah um, th there's guys out here that are making over six figures trying for dollars and it's cold calling, hand dialing it. Hand yeah. dialing has advantages though. Like you get a lot less spam likely. Yeah. I just like, you know, how fast you, I would go through a list. How many cold calls have you made personally yourself in the past week? I haven't really started. So the, why, uh, well, let's stop talking about dialing. Let's just do a hand dialing first. Yeah. I don't want you to get a dialer unless you have done a thousand hand dials yourself. Okay. I've done hand dialing before though. I feel like, I feel like it's pretty easy uh, to just call and be like, Hey, will you sell me your house? How many hand dials have you done? Oh, I haven't counted, but I've drove for dollars and hand dialed that list with true people search.com. There were a thousand. No. Get a thousand in first, man. Like uh, let's get some, let's just get some marketing doing like no marketing is so much worse than just a little bit of it. Yeah. We, we just gotta get some marketing going. Let, let's stop like, oh, let's wait for the money. Get just, I don't care. Just start marketing if it's free. Just do it. Right. Uh, do you have any tips? I feel like the only thing uh, I'm really thinking right now with the market is just getting that price very low. It's you know, like I'm even thinking like I could start trying to get into contact with cash buyers, or I could you know just work on getting that price very low to get you know attract cash buyers and so you're you know, overthinking it man you think get the so? deal then find the cash buyer get the deal and then get the cash. okay bro that, that's it dude you think i have to get the price pretty low though because of the way you know the market I mean, not pretty like uh, get a discount on it and see if a cash buyer is willing to buy it the worst okay. case scenario you don't get a deal the best case scenario you make some money mm -hmm. the per the man that goes out here and puts the property under contract as soon as Paul is just doing activity, they're going to do more deals than the person that's overanalyzing everything. Right. You don't have to be perfect, man. You just got to do it. Right. Just got to dive in. Yeah. Sweet. Like, you're overthinking it. And your brain is subconsciously trying to find a way not to do it right now. But you know deep down in your heart, you know you should be doing it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You're right. You know it. You're right. You're right. But guess what? Do what you know you have to do. Because you know that will make you a better wholesaler and that will make you closer to getting your first deal. Right. You all have that phrase, uh, do what I think, I think I heard it from you guys, you and your father, the do what you don't want to do to. Pinky Johnson. Do what something like that. <laughs> you get results that others don't. Right. 
Yeah. But you're not even at that. You you're you're literally just not doing anything. Right. Like, do just thinking about it. Yeah. I did get, I did pull that list though. The so I have the good list. What do you think about the vacant list with twelve hundred leads? It's fine, man. It's fine. My my bigger problem is you not doing any marketing. Right. I just have the list sitting there. Omar, why do you want to? Why do you? Why are you talking to me right now? Like, why do you actually want to get your first deal? Like, what's your motivation? What's your reason? <laughs> Specifically right now, I just wanted to tell you, I guess, where my mindset's at, what I have. With the, All right, let's list. cut that off. Why do you want to get into wholesaling? Um, to freedom of my time, mainly. Okay. So is that your number one reason why you're getting into wholesaling? Yeah, but it's uh, actually a very important one to me. It's is it very more, meaningful. Are you watching TV in the background? Yeah. What's it's more important on. to you? Freedom of your time or watching TV? I'm not really watching. It's just there. Why, why is it on? Mm, I guess just as a means of distraction. You're distracting your dreams. Right. You know that, right? Homie's right, yeah. I, dude, I, I, you can come on here every single day. But what I can tell you is your dreams are not going to work unless you work. You right. will not change unless you change. So I'm putting up a strict uh, – turn the TV off. Turn it off. Turn it off. Oh, turn it off. Yeah, turn it off. <laughs> I'm watching TV. Why are you going to watch TV? <laughs> right? You're just very zoned in, man, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because I know what I want. All right. So we're, this is what we're going to do. How many hours do you think you spend on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and TV watching a week? Honestly, honestly, I'd probably say more than I should. How many? Uh, specifically, a week. Yes. A lot, man. I don't know though. Thirty, forty. Let's say at least two hours. A, no, I want to say two hours a day. Two hours a day. That's not bad. That's actually not terrible. All right. Well, two yeah. hours a day, seven days a week. That's fourteen hours. Okay. What I'm asking for you is nothing crazy. Give me seven, cut that in half. Cut that in half to seven hours a week of marketing. Just do that. Hmm. Okay, that's all I'm asking. Nothing crazy, just seven hours. Yeah. An hour a day where you spend calling, pulling lists, and doing things. I don't care if it's three hours of pulling lists and four hours of cold calling, but put seven hours every single week into just getting closer to that first deal. I like it, man. I got to get the ball rolling, you know, with what I got. I could just use true people search for now, you know. The next call could be, you know, the next big deal for me, I What's guess. What's your favorite so. TV show? Movie, whatever. Lost. It's a good TV show. Lost? You, you ever seen it, man? I heard Lost is pretty good. Man, you should watch it. It's a good one. It's a classic, man. Part. You hear something cool about Lost with me? Wait, you know what? I can watch Lost three hours a day for the next month and watch the entire thing. You know why? So you got because you got money, right? Life, not watching any TV shows and cold calling every single hour of the day, pulling lists and doing everything to reach my dream. I'm at my dream now. Yeah. I can watch that show whenever I want now, because I made that sacrifice in the beginning. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to make that sacrifice so you can watch any show you want four or five hours a day. But right. you're gonna have to give a sacrifice right now for it. That's completely right. You're sacrificing your dreams right now to watch the show, two hours a day. Oh, I don't watch it now, but you said two hours a day of just shows. So cut that in half, get started marketing. And I'm telling you, if you can do seven hours a week for a year straight, you're gonna get very close to getting your first deal. That just gets yeah. closer, man. Yeah. I like it, man. I like body in motion will stay in motion. Right? Yeah. Laws of physics, man. Laws of physics. If you're not actively doing deals, if you're not actively marketing, you can't get a deal. Right. It's crazy, man. Hope this is a wake up call, bro. Yeah, Seven hours. Holy shit. <laughs> next time I see you, I'm going to see you next week. I want you to generally look me in the eye and I want to hear confidently that you did seven hours. Okay. If you want to shut me up, do four hours on Monday, three hours on Tuesday, then you can just be done with, with it, okay? I just went part-time with my job too, so I should right. be able to do that.
Well, let me know how it goes. Seven hours. Thank you, Zach, man. You have a good day, man. I appreciate right. your wisdom. All right. See you, Thanks, man. man. See you, man. Let's see if Omar turns the TV back on or he starts pulling some more lists. <laughs> All right. Let's see what he does. I'll have him on the screen. I'm going to keep him on there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep my eye on him. Let's see what he does. Let's see if he goes on that computer, starts pulling his lists, getting the skip tracing going, getting true people searched. Let's see what he's doing. You know, if he was smart, that's what a smart guy would do. He would have his TV show on while true people searching phone numbers. That's what a smart person would do. But let's see what he's doing. I got my eye on him. Christian, what is up? Oh, what's up, bro? Long time no see. How's it going? Awesome, man. Welcome back. What's up? How can I help you out today? Uh, yes, bro. This is a question that I know probably is in the course, but to be honest with you, I've been kind of like the last guy you just spoke to, man, kind of been slacking or whatnot. But I just decided to hop on and ask the question. Um, so it's a, regarding double closing. Uh, I actually have it written down right here, so I wouldn't forget. So um, I heard that there's two types of versions when it comes to double closings. And I'm a little confused because I hear 50% of people saying one thing and then a 50% saying another. Uh, let's focus on the first one. So when I asked some people, 50% say that you must have transactional funding in order to buy the deal, even if it's for a couple of minutes or seconds, then you sell right away to the buyer, right? But the other 50% of people say that you can use the end buyer's money to actually you buy the deal, even if it's for a couple of minutes or whatnot. And with that same money from the end buyers, you now sell to the buyer with his own money, which is called like double escrow or whatnot. Well, anyways, the whole point is that, you know, some people told me that that's, they look at me crazy when I tell them that. And I talk to people tell me, oh, I do that all the time. Uh, the guy, Paul McComas, he even did a video on double closing, and he says the same thing, that you can use the own end buyer's money to actually um, purchase the deal without you having to have any transactional funding or any you know loan for a short period amount of time. And I think one day uh, I watched your dad's video, and he said, kind of explained that you could do that as well. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I remember quite. So yeah, that's my question, bro. Um, is it two types or do you, is it, is it a must for transactional funding? Because for example, let's say me, I'm starting off. Let's say I don't have 120,000 to buy the Christian. deal for a couple of minutes. Christian. Yeah. What's up? Christian. It's called double closing in escrow. I believe that's the term. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You just ask a title company if they do a double closing in escrow. Okay. If they say no, you go to the next one. That's how the game works. There's going to be title companies that like it and title companies that don't like it. You got to okay. find the title company that likes it. That's it. Okay. It's illegal. It, so if your question is, is it illegal or not? It's legal in 99% of states because you need an attorney to write off on it all. And really the title company is responsible too. Just got to find a title company that is okay with doing it. Okay. That's it. There's gotcha. title companies that are not okay with wholesaling. Wholesaling is legal. They just don't want to deal with it. Same thing. Okay. But You're uh, really well, complicating it, man. Yeah, I 100%. That's 100% true. Um, so let's say we do find a title company that works with it. Again, do we have to have the transactional funding or whatever type of loan just to buy the Christian, deal? You can hear what I said. You have yeah. to ask. Okay. A title company that's okay with the double closing and escrow will say you don't need it. Okay. A title company that is not okay with it will say you do need it. So you got to gotcha. find the one that is okay with you not needing it. Gotcha. Perfect. That's right. it. Couldn't have said it better, bro. Awesome. All right, man. Thank you. Keep it up, bro. You know it. All right. Boom. All right, guys. That's all the time we got for today. Guys, if you go out here and start going out here and finding the hottest virtual markets ever, you will get better, guys. Go to freelancing.com. That's where everything we have for you to become as successful as possible is that, guys, Hit me up at freelisting.com. See you guys there. I'll see you guys uh, Tuesday. Rick will be on tomorrow at 5 p.m. Go see him out. But, guys, make sure you go to freelisting.com, and I'll see you guys soon.